Hello everyone and welcome to our What is Sarello webinar. I'm David Martin and I have been part of the WSCT for over 10 years. I am based in our head office in London and my main role here is looking after and supporting our approved program providers in the EMEA region, in particular Spain, Portugal and the UK. I'm very pleased today to welcome Ferran Centelles and Alba Barcells uh, to the session. Uh, Alba Fer Ferran, thank you very much for joining us today. You're very welcome. <laughs> As many of you probably know, the Wine and Spirit Education Trust, or WSET, is the world's leading provider of qualifications in wines, spirits, sake, and very soon beer. WCT has over 50 years experience in designing and delivering education to help professionals and consumers to learn more about these products. You can take WCT qualifications in over 70 countries through a network of more than 800 course providers. If you're interested in finding out more about embarking on a WCT journey, visit wctglobal.com to find your nearest course provider. I would like to remind you that this webinar is being recorded and it will be available to watch via the WST Global Events Hub on YouTube. Also, please feel free to post your questions in the Q&A box and we will try to cover as many as possible at the end of the session. This webinar is part of a longer education collaboration with INCABI, the Catalan Institute of Vine and Wine. Uh, the INCABI became a WCT partner in 2023 as part of their interest in education and promotion of the Catalan wine country. This partnership has been possible thanks to the efforts of their manager director, Alba Baltes. Thanks, Alba, for helping with, the, with this project. So the INCABI, uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, is a public research center focused on viticultural and enological activity and its main focus or activity is to promote research and experimentation and to promote Catalan wines and its denominations of origin. And now, let me introduce you our speaker today. So, Ferran Centelles, here with me today. He is the wine director of El Bulli Foundation, uh, and he has been linked to the project since 1999. And, but he has done quite a lot more. So he's been the best sommelier in Spain in 2006, National Gastronomy Award in 2011. He has been the WCT Best Alumni in 2020. He lectures wine in many schools in Spain, Chile, and Colombia. And he holds the WCT Diploma and the Advanced Level of the Court of Master Sommeliers. He's also a regular judge at international competitions such as the Cantor, where he's the regional co-chair for Spain. And also he um, is in charge of the content of Bullypedia, Sapiens del Vino, a full wine encyclopedia devoted to gather the wine knowledge for future sommeliers. If that is not enough, he has also published three wine books. So very welcome, Ferran. <laughs> Thank you very much for being with us today. I'm really looking forward to know more about this amazing great Yeah, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be here with you, uh, all guys. And uh, WCT is so, so a very special organization. I've been through the wine courses and, and I know how tough they are. So first of all, I wanted to, to thank you, all of you that are listening to uh, to the seminar, also encourage you to to keep studying, especially for the ones that they are doing well, all the levels. But diploma, it's, it's really tough. So, all my best and all my energy. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Fran. I let you um, to start with your presentation. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we'll be we'll be talking about uh, uh, Charello. Uh, Charello, you should know that. Uh, a part of being a main uh, white grape variety in in Catalonia, it's also one of my favorites. So please, please, if I speak like very proudly of of about it, 
it's it's because I just I just really really love this great variety and it's been kind of a revolution for the last twenty years. I remember when when I started at at El Bulli, that was nineteen ninety nine. They were not any um, single hundred percent charello. And today, if you visit uh, Spain and especially for instance uh, Catalonia, you will see the producers betting on this great variety, betting on on charello. Uh, for producing their top range. So it's not just a grape variety that is grown in Catalonia, but it's also a grape that we are very proud and we are starting, I would say since 25 years um, back, we are starting to promote and to see it as the best grape to produce some of the super top uh, quality wines. So it's not just the volume, but also uh, the quality and also this feeling of the producers of being very, very proud of, of it. Well, this is me, we've been through that, no, no, it's not important. Uh, first of all, uh, we need to talk about etymology. Etymology has nothing to do about uh, genetics or where Charelle comes from, but it seems I'm taking here the works the words of Xavier Fabra Agut, uh, which is a very uh, prestigious name in uh, in Catalonia and, and uh, regarding uh, etymology, and he says, or it seems, that charello might come from uh, the Italian charello, that means really clear, something that is kind of uh, of clear, and probably because of the color of the of the skin, we'll see, yeah, of, of the color of the of the varieties so uh, it's not really certain but also it has some uh, southern france influence in in the name uh, but of course it's catalanized so always that in terms i'm i'm that's something that xavier uh, fabra explains something that ends with the double l and the and the point so charello with the two l's it means that it's quite recent on the Catalan language, so we adopted this this name uh, not not super far 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 uh, ago. I would say like one hundred fifty years, no no more. So, charello might come from the Italian charello, but it's quite recent uh, on the way we pronounce it in in Catalonia. Yeah, we also have another name for for charello that's also uh, uh, an important name. In Catalonia, we can also say that this pansa, especially pansa blanca, that it's from uh, Alella, especially, but also uh, cartuja. So if you say, uh, if you see here in in 1890, already we were using the three names: charello, pansalet, or cartuja. So and today the three names they share a protagonism in in Catalonia. So we find charello mainly it's a name that we use it kind of everywhere. We have also Pansa, Pansa Blanca in uh, in Alella and Car Cartuja, as we will see in Tarragona uh, appellation. We'll be going through through this information uh, afterwards. But we have, as you see, and that's from this very old book, kind of Pansa, that it's also kind of related with Charero. We have many, many different uh, styles. We have Pansa Blanca, Negra, Barbella, Roja, Rosa. This is an ancient, ancient uh, words. It means that uh, we had many different styles of pansa at uh, at that time. At that time, and if you see here this this map, it's quite interesting, yeah, because you see that that charello is well spread in in Catalonia, which is this part we have in the in the north of of the map. But also we have something, some charello uh, called pansal in Mallorca, and also some charello down to Valencia or, or Comunidad Valenciana called Jaén, and even another name, it's uh, Doradillo. So all these terms are, are kind of uh, related to, to Charello. That's the uh, the way it uh, it is. Okay, that's, that's on the etymology, on the name side, but also on the genetics. It's very interesting, Charello. And I hope you are all seated because that is really shocking. You know that... You know Macabeo for sure. I'm sure you know Macabeo, yeah, uh, which is another very important Catalan grape variety and Spanish and they called Biura in, in Rioja. So Macabeo, Biura, which is this, the, the same grape variety, and Charello, they have the same papa and the same mama. 
can you believe that? Genetics are crazy because there are two great varieties that are so, so different, so different between uh, each other, both in, in, in terms of, of the plant and in terms of the profile of wines they provide, but they come from the same mama and the same papa. Well, in this case, in this case, sorry, uh, they they come from Heaven. Heaven is a great variety that it's uh, it's an ancestor of many, many, many different grapes within uh, Spain. And Brustiano Fo, that well, it's a it's a grape that I think it's it's almost uh, uh, disappeared. That com that comes from France. Uh, so Even comes from Castilla. Um, Brustino Fo comes from France, and they they had some uh, uh, love affair between each two of them, and they they get a birth to to Charello and and Macabeo. It's so incredible that two grapes that are so so different between each other they have the same parents. So what what we have uh, in here? Well, we have we also say in Catalonia we have uh, you know Charello, Macabeo, and Parellada, and we say always Charello first, then Macabeo, and then Parellada, because this is actually the the uh, harvesting time. So we always pick first Charello, then Macabeo, and the and the later and very difficult to um, a bit more difficult to uh, to ripe uh, uh, Parellada. So uh, Charello. Actually, it has a, a, a medium uh, ripening season, okay, medium high, uh, a bigger, and uh, it's very low or it has a low fertility on the basal buds. What what does it mean? If it has a low fertility on the on the basal buds, it means that uh, it works well or it works really better if we do a long a pruning. Uh, so if if we sometimes uh, let in the plant like three or four buds, or we do a cane. Or well, you are familiar about the pruning systems, and and especially well, charello also with malvasia. Those grape varieties that they are they have low fertility on the basal buds, they need a bit longer uh, a pruning uh, a system. Also, it's a bit prone to mineral and dye and chlorur, uh, and also uh, some uh, fungal diseases. Uh, they also can. Uh, affect uh, Charello, but you see this picture; it's it's uh, beautiful. Uh, and if, if you realize that the grapes, they are very fleshy if they are well grown, of course, and they have this thick skin, as you can see in the picture, and also this kind of golden uh, uh, color. It's it's always a bit kind of of golden color, uh, very small uh, uh, berry, berries, and and very. I mean. You see that, and 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 you start to feeling that oh, that might be a very good grape variety to uh, to do on on the wine making. Yeah? So this is a bit of of uh, the profile, and uh, I could say, and don't kill me about that. Uh, if you tell me, because that's that's something I I really think it that way. How many styles of charello? And I could say there are as many styles of charello as winemakers, because honestly, it's a very versatile uh, grape variety, and I have tasted. Charello in so 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 many different uh, vinifications and and way of uh, of production. But if I need to uh, to summarize, uh, what is special about uh, Charello is that it uh, it doesn't really burn acid, so it keeps uh, a beautiful and sorry beautiful. It's not a word I can use in WCT. Don't kill me. Yeah, it keeps it, it uh, keeps a a, a high uh, a high acidity. It doesn't burn. Uh, acids uh, and also it accumulates sugar quite easily so it's two very good aspects so it can accumulate sugar and also keep the the acidity and it's quite neutral on the aromatics yeah so that also gives opportunity for charello to be produced in many different ways sparkling wines are very important with charello because it easily uh, accepts the autholytic character or other or all characters. So take Charello as a, as a neutral grape variety when you are studying uh, WCT, uh, like Chenin, like Chardonnay. So we can we can put Charello on this uh, family, not on the aromatic side, but on, on the uh, neutral neutral side. And here you have this uh, kind of uh, blossom, almonds, fennel, peachy <laughs> notes, but also have that that in mind really neutral eh? that means like chenin like chardonnay like pinot grigio uh, that 
they can accept many different winemaking techniques and it has also a love affair with with oak with leaves with all these kind of secondary uh, vinifications so these are these are the the, the data here uh, you see in the box there are the the regions with this within catalonia that has that they have more charello uh, planted so we'll be talking about aleya uh, costes del segra penedes Tarragona, Deo Catalunya, and Deo Cava, and also Corpinat. These are uh, regions that, that are um, based on Charello. Well, we can discuss about uh, Costes del Segre and Tarragona, but for sure, it's also good to, to name, name them. And uh, from roughly 10,000 uh, hectares, it's a lot. Eh? Uh, almost a half are found in, uh, in Penedes. Um, I'm sure that you are aware about our, our country, that we have many different climates uh, or climatic condition uh, going from, from Mediterranean uh, climate to more inland uh, continental climate. Uh, and Charello can be grown and can be found in most, I would say, in any of single climate that we do have in uh, in Catalonia. So here you have, uh, this is uh, the starting point, Deo Alella. Uh, I see, if I take, I'm in Barcelona or now, if I take my, my car and I drive uh, to Alella, I will be in this beautiful vineyard in 20 minutes. So Alella, it's, it's an, uh, kind of an a urban um, uh, a vineyard. It's, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's, it's a tiny, uh, roughly 250 hectares, but it's very qualitative oriented. Anella, and you should probably know about this kind of soil called uh, saulo, which is sandy, sandy and granite, uh, granite. Sorry, sorry about that. See, granite, and this is very good for for uh, for quality. Extremely low yields. It's crazy how come the the, the granite soils the, it it concentrates the the berries uh, because water cannot be retained. So uh, when you when you taste uh, Charelos named Panza Blanca in, in Alella, they are always super salty and super savory and, and really concentrated because of, of the soil and, and because of this uh, granite soils not, not retaining uh, uh, water. Uh, I would say that 50 years ago, there was an, a style, very important style in Alella regarding Panza Blanca, regarding Charelo, that was produced like off dry or kind of uh, semi sweet. That was the, the the typical style fermented in in big oak cask or concrete uh, tanks. But all that changed in the in the eighties uh, when they adopted the stainless steel. When they copied the way of pro they copied the way of producing wine in in Penedes. So today, uh, Alella wines they they kind of follow this this trend of low uh, fermentation temperatures, stainless steel, or probably some oak kind of of. Penedes, actually, uh, we normally like to say that that uh, Alella wines are more salty, but actually blind tasting is difficult to kind of uh, be sure if the wine comes from Alella or, or, or Penedes. And there are some wineries that are trying to promote the old fashioned style. That means oak, that means a bit of residual sugar in, in Alella. So they are in search of, of the style. But if you see Alella on a, on a label of wine, you know that it's... Uh, Low production, and you always know that it's focused on on quality. On quality, I just you have here uh, some some of the labels, uh, classic classic labels, and and how that change from semi sweets or off dry wines with oak influence and oxidation uh, to super clean, pure, low fermentation and stainless steel fermentation uh, wines. Okay, you should also be aware that uh, actually. We think that Charello kind of started to be very important uh, just when the phylloxera crisis happened, okay? Because it was a great variety that it we could transport, we could send wines produced from Charello. They are very resistant to oxidation. We were sending a lot of Charello wines to to France uh, to to balance. Uh, when when French wines they were not able to produce, so actually all this Charello uh, boom started when uh, Phylloxera hit. Uh, so it was kind of the grey variety that, in terms of white, in terms of white, that helps to kind of sell. I, that's why I said that there is a very important fact that Charello 
was the salvation of an era. So that started to be very important during during the the Phylloxera. Costes al Segre. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop uh, uh, here just to know or to let you know that Costes al Segre is also a very important wine region with many different climates. As I said, seven sub zones uh, from the Pyrenees to the Ebro River. Uh, it's crazy from mountain wines to very hot continental uh, um, bottom of the valley wine. So, but there are a few of them. There are a few Cerelos that they are super interesting. And it's it's a, it, it's an appellation that it's based on, on research, on modernity, on technology, on innovation. So very, very nice. Uh, also, we're seeing many things going on in, in Costes del Segre, just to, to let you know. Yeah. So um, I was, I was, ask not to be very deep uh, and not to be super technical, but I'm sorry, guys, we are here listening to a WCT course uh, or seminar. So I'm going to be a bit technical here because I have been reading books about Cerello and very important books. And, and I see many of them repeating that Cerello is very high on polyphenols. Okay. Polyphenols, that, that means that it's very nice or a very, it has a, a very good ability to age. That's why it's very bitter, and and we we need just to to do a deeper focus on on that. Um, so actually, Charello, can you hear that, please? I'm gonna put it like highlight. See, Charello, it's a variety which is low, low on poly, on polyphenol content. Vale, okay, low on polyphenols, but yeah. yeah, you will see it in many websites. You can read that in many books that. Uh, Charello has a lot of antioxidants and claims to be uh, a, a very good grape variety because it has a higher uh, polyphenol content, not at all. If we see the general numbers, polyphenols in Charello are low. However, that's also very important. So low in, uh, in polyphenols, but, but as you see here uh, in this um, information, the, it has a lot of catechins which is a kind of uh, polyphenol, as if you see here, it has uh, more than Macabeo and more than Charello. And these catechins, they give a bit of astringence and bitterness. That's why sometimes Charello can be a bit bitter and astringent, and we love that. So this kind of bitter um, profile of Charello, we really, we really love it. Uh, that's on one, on one side. And then there is this other uh, uh, family, if, if you see here, uh, well, these are names of, of phenol acids that like, like caftaric, ferulic, okay? These are acids that they, the, uh, phenolic acids that they kind of uh, prevent the browning of oxidation and also, and also they, uh, they are precursors of volatile compounds that we don't like, you know, this kind of medicinal or a smoky touch, yeah? So those those uh, phenolic acids, sorry, Charello, it's very low. So if you see here the, the chart, which is in, in blue, uh, and, and you see this particular phenolic acid or this particular phenolic acid, you see Charello with a very low um, quantity of, uh, of this. And that's very good because that means that there will be less browning by oxidation and also less problems on getting this kind of medicinal volatile compounds or kind of smoky compounds that we don't like. Okay. And uh, also, yeah, uh, another polyphenol, uh, which is known as GRP, you see it in here. Okay. Uh, it's also a, a, a very good uh, polyphenol because it, it prevents the, the, the browning. Yeah. And on the right hand side, you see here uh, uh, that Charello has a very high uh, quantity of estilvens. Estilvens is another kind of uh, phenolic compound. Yeah, estilvens. You you have you see here more than one milligram per uh, per liter of estilvens. That it's it's a great a great uh, phenol. Yeah, and and it's. Well, still when you may heard about uh, resveratrol, resveratrol, you should know that it's a kind of, of still when, and this is a very powerful antioxidant. Okay. So in a nutshell, you should, you should know that 
uh, in general speaking, Charello has low level of polyphenol of polyphenols, but is very high in estilbenz and some other um, kind of phenolic acids that they prevent uh, oxidation. Yeah, and they can also be a bit astringent and bitter. So just just to be very clear on on that, low levels of polyphenols, but high levels of estilbenz. That means great because they don't get brown, they don't oxidize, and that's that's very cool. And that's why Charello is taking part, and it's very important to produce long-aging cavas, long-aging corpinats, and beautiful long-aging uh, still white wines. So as you see here, the most important um, appellation for uh, Charello is Penedès. Now we have divided Penedès in many, many subregions, and it's where the revolution happen. Top wineries, top producers today betting on Charello, as I already said, to produce their super top uh, high range uh, white wine and produced in many, in many different styles. We use old wines, um, terracotta. It's also popular today in Penedès. Brizat, which means orange in Catalan, also popular for Charello. Bottle aging, stainless steel, good and especially Catalan good like chestnut barrels, beautiful, or oh, acacia barrels, also very beautiful. Uh, a love affair with lease and, and sparkling. Just, I don't want to, to uh, forget about Tarragona and we all know that Tarragona is probably not so popular, not super popular for Charello, but for Macabeo. So Macabeo, it's very, maybe more important than Charello, but the local name in Tarragona, it's Cartuxa. Eh? And they are recovering a cartouche vermel, so kind of reddish uh, style of charello, which uh, it's also now being kind of trendy here in, in Catalonia. So cartouche vermel or charello vermel, it's also uh, the great variety that we see it more and more very trendy, uh, especially for all these kind of uh, low interventional intervention wines that's also super popular today. So do, please do remember about this name and about Tarragona with this beautiful uh cooperatives and, and these beautiful modernist uh, uh buildings and just to to finish also um, as as you all probably all all know because uh if you've been through wct level three and diploma uh that's super well explained in there that charello it's the main great variety as i said because of this kind of uh, higher estil bands yeah, or antioxidants Polyphenols, it's great to produce long age cavas and top quality cavas. Also, this kind of bitter touch, touch of this uh, fennel aroma. They are also very welcome uh, when we are tasting or producing uh, sparkling wines. That's that's something that it's happening both in cava and 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 Corpinat too. Some beautiful labels for signature sparkling wines produced from uh, from Charello. Yeah. So this is it uh, briefly. Yeah, uh, I have uh, run out of, of time and I, I promise that that we were keeping yeah, uh, the timing on, on the proper way. I, I just hope that you, you like it and discover things about Charello. Uh, and, and I promise, promise, yeah, oh, I really recommend you to go and taste some beautiful Charellos because it, it, they don't disappoint. Thank you very much, Ferran. Very, very, very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. So we have a few questions uh, from, from from the people listening to us. Uh, I will try to, to select all of, some of them. I don't think we have time for all, but mm -hmm. I will see how many we can go through. So let's start with this one. Sounds interesting. Jaume Sanz asks, uh, to what other varieties in the world does Charello have similarities to and why? Oh, wow. That's a good question. Yeah, that's a very good question. Yeah, I could say, no, Charello is unique or blah, 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 blah. But somehow, somehow, uh, and I take the opportunity uh, being at, at WCT, uh, it's a bit, on, on the palate, it's a bit like Verdicchio uh, with this kind of almony, yeah, this this bitterness. So Italian Verdicchio could sometimes uh, um, have some similarities with, with Charello, but it's difficult, it's, it's difficult. Uh, uh, what I really w want to, to point and, and to make clear is that Charello is a great, great, great variety to age. Uh, uh, so 
any other grape varieties like uh, in the Mediterranean that are able to, to age well, they can also be kind of related to the style of Cerelo, always if they are uh, low and neutral on the aromatics. So no, no roses, no floral, no extremely peachy, never, no, no, no. It's not a Riesling, it's not a, you know, it's not a, um, a Yegus, it's nothing, a Sauvignon Blanc, nothing at all. Eh? It's more delicate yeah, and neutral on the aromatics. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Nicole is asking as well, uh, sorry, I lost the question by now. Um, is there a difference in the vineyard management for, produ for producing a sparkling wine or still wines of Charello? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sparkling wines, they can be a bit higher on, on the yields. Yeah, and, and also it's very important to, to pick really, really early uh, because they need lower level of alcohol, they need a higher level of, of, uh, of acidity and they can prune a bit kind of... Uh, cane or a, a longer yeah a longer pruning uh to promote this uh this higher um yeah higher yields yeah so yeah and 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 also uh you you see that when you visit uh, uh penedes which is great you see some very old vines producing charello that they are beautiful and 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 very old and very uh, uh tiny uh tiny vines so those vines they are better for still still wines uh, because they really do concentrated grape, very still fleshy and still nice, but you know, very tasty um, grapes. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, I think we are very, very short of time. I think we have time probably for a last question. I'm sorry, because there are some very interesting questions here in the, in the, yeah. in the question and answer box. But let me just ask one that is actually very relevant with all the news we are hearing from Barcelona lately. So, mm -hmm. what is the current situation in the vineyards with the lack of water? Uh, wow. Yeah, that's a very good question and 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 very worrying actually because uh, we are we are suffering uh, uh, a lot and actually uh, uh, even last year when you, when you visited the the, the harvest time the, um, the yields were extremely reduced and and you could kind of feel a lack of freshness even in the in the grape juice yeah even in the grape juice kind of browner color uh, when when doing the pressings and and. And uh, lower, lower uh, acidity and lower complexity. So it's it's probably the the a very worrying situation. And and especially Catalonia, it's very very hit about uh, about uh, not not having not having water. And actually, talking with producer, this, this is the main concern. It's a main concern. So yeah, uh, they they've been tough years for us. Yeah, they've been very tough. Yeah, for both quantity and also quality. Yeah, very much. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, Karen. we cannot carry on asking you question. I think we all would like to listen more about um, this fantastic grape, but we are running out of time. So, again, thank you very much, uh, Ferran. Thank you very much, Alba. And thank you, Incavi, for this collaboration. I think uh, it's, uh, it's proven very successful. Um, just, uh, I want to remind everybody that the recording will be emailed to everybody so you can watch it again if you, you like and it will be a wall available to watch as well at the WSCT events hub on YouTube. So please check there because there are so many interesting uh, webinars uh, in that area. And uh, we are having we will be having a, um, a poll as well so please if you can just answer the poll that will be sent uh, soon. And just to remind you that there is another webinar coming on the 26th of January, so tomorrow at 3 p.m. UK time or GTM. And that is about studying wine with WCT. So if this webinar or any other activities you are doing with wine, it has a walk in your interest in wine, so might be an interesting webinar to watch. Um, yeah. To find out anything else about the WCT, just visit our wctglobal.com, where you can find also where our providers are around the world. So again, Ferran, Alba, thank you very much for the session today. And I thank hope that we thank hear you. more thank from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all you. Thank Thanks you, for everyone. You. Yeah. And uh, best luck to, to all the students. Uh, energy. Yeah. And keep focus. Keep focus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.